Hey there folks, I'm Mark in affiliation with Spectrum Pulse, and this, it's Billboard Breakdown. I don't remember. So, last episode, I made a bunch of mistakes, as you guys pointed out with rather meticulous regularity. One of the pieces of the single art was wrong in the top 10, I actually got one of the top 10 placements wrong, and even the title of the video was set initially to the wrong date. A lot of screw-ups there. And trust me, I understand why After Hours by the weekend rose with its full week of tracking. My exasperation more came because it's a song that's got no hook or conceivable staying power. Anyway. We all have bad weeks when we're rushing and trying to do three things at once, as I was when I made that episode, and I assure you, all this is more interesting than the goddamn Lil Baby and Bad Bunny album bombs that we got this week. Yeah, I knew we were going to get at least one, but this was a massacre. And with Lil Uzi Vert album bomb waiting on the wings next week, I literally have no idea when the charts might return to what passes as normal. Or what indeed's even gonna survive. Now, I mean, I guess the one thing we can cling to for support is our top 10, or to the surprise of nobody, The Box by Roddy Rich stole an iron grip on number one, both thanks to the video giving the streaming a boost. Although the radio has clearly peaked, so if that streaming gets seriously disrupted, there might be a problem. Again, I'd say that it would open up a window for Life is Good by Future featuring Drake, but despite having more radio legs, it just can't narrow that streaming margin and it's stranded at number two. Too. And anything that's going to impact streaming is going to impact it too. And I don't think Don't Start Now by Dua Lipa is really in a place to eclipse either of them. Yes, up to number three on a sales and airplay run, but it just does not have the streaming it needs. Now this places Circles by Post Malone in an awkward position at number four, as the radio isn't quite in free fall yet, and it still has good sales, but its streaming is even worse, it's clearly on the way out. But then we got a debut in the top ten, and one I've already seen fall out of conversation, Stupid Love by Lady Gaga at number 5. Yes, great sales, better streaming across the board than pop normally gets, and it's got radio traction in spades, but I get the weird feeling that this might not last, and we'll get to why a lot later on. It did blow past Roxanne by Arizona Zervis at number 6, which might have peaked on the radio and had a rough week on streaming, but it's going to take time to fall off, which takes us to Blinding Lights by The weekend up to number 7. Yes, it's got huge sales, and the radio's on board, and I'd even argue it's got the on-demand streaming, but can it narrow the margins fast enough? It did go past Dance Monkey by Tones and I at number 8, which still has great sales, but took a serious loss on streams and the radio, but at least it held up over Memories by Maroon 5 down at number 9, which is losing even more radio, it's only being propped up by some lingering sales. Now finally, and rectifying a mistake of mine from last week, Intentions by Justin Bieber featuring Quavo is actually in the top 10 on consistent strength across the board. Thanks, America. I wanted to get a head start on my list of the worst hits of 2020 early. But on to our other depressing notes, our losers and dropouts. And since it's the album bomb week, we had a lot of the latter. From hits that had clinched their year end spot, like Highest in the Room by Travis Scott, Trampoline by Shade, and Only Human by the Jonas Brothers, do holdovers from last year, like I Don't Care by Ed Sheeran and Justin Bieber, as well as Sucker by the Jonas Brothers. The songs that are just strangled early, like Toes by DaBaby, Lil Baby, and Moneybag Yo, South the Border by Ed Sheeran featuring Camila Cabello and Cardi B, Riding Roads by Dustin Lynch, and Sugar by Brock Hampton. I mean, I gotta hope that one is gonna revive thanks to the remix, but I can't predict these things. And since a full 20% of the Hot 100 is losing, let's rattle through the now from the debuts, we got Moral the Story by Ash at 82, Lil Top by Young Boy Never Broke Again at 73, and On by BTS plummeting down to 68. Told you all this would happen. And the expected lost gains with After Hours by The Weeknd collapsing down to 66, Dior by The Late Pop Smoke at 47, and Pussy Fairy by Jeanne Aiko at 100. It should rebound next week just hope. Now, the truth is that the twin album bomb doesn't quite feel as big because a bunch of these songs were already heading out as it is. No Time to Die by Billie Eilish at 96, Suicidal by YNW Melly at 93, I Hope You're Happy Now by Carly Pierce and Lee Bryce at 88, this might rebound, To Die For by Sam Smith at 84, Numbers by A Boogie With The Hoodie featuring Roddy Rich, Gunna, and London on the track, and thankfully, Yummy by Justin Bieber at number 40. Now for the rest, 
Well, outside of the country and country adjacent hits like Kin Folks by Sam Hunt at 46, We Back by Jason Aldean at 79, Make Me Want To by Jimmy Allen at 80, and I Wish Grandpas Never Die by Riley Green at 83. The rest are kind of a mixed bag with Know Your Worth by Khalid and Disclosure at 86, Out West by Jack Boys and Young Thug at 90, and Before You Go by Louis Capaldi at number 95. Lovely. Now, like all album bomb weeks, there's not really a lot stepping up for returns and gains outside of the expected ties to said album bombs, like Ignorantes by Bad Bunny and Sec back at 49, or the big boost for Vete by Bad Bunny up to 36, and Some to Prove by Lil Baby at 26. I mean, the only other gain is Say So by Doja Cat at 16, a song that I'm rapidly getting tired of because thanks to limp retro disco from Dr. Luke in production, strips away all of her weird personality that's made her a lot more fun. Enjoy the short-lived radio traction, Doge Cat. I don't see this sticking around. But now to the bigger matter at hand. We're dealing with a double album bomb. And to my amazement, both Lil Baby and Bad Bunny satisfy my album bomb conditions, with more than eight songs debuting a piece. And thus the rules are in effect. I'm only covering the best or worst of the week and the contenders or what they got in the top 40. And there's a sizable amount of both. So from Lil Baby, we got Can't Explain at 99, We Should with Young Thug at 91, Forever with Lil Wayne at 64, How at 59, No Sucker with Moneybag Yo at 58, Get Ugly at 54, and Grace with 42 Doug at 48. And from Bad Bunny, Esta Cabron Serio with Annual AA at 97, Big Chial with Yavaya at 89, Safaria with Joel and Randy and Nego Flo at 81, Yo Pero Sola at 69, Pero Ya No at 63, and La Santa with Daddy Yankee. Okay, got all that? All right, now on to our remaining new arrivals. Starting with number 98, Sunday Best by Surfaces. When in the walk around the neighborhood. And here I thought I'd wind up with some disposable trash from Lil Baby as the obvious worst of the week, but nope! Now for those of you who don't know, Surfaces is an antiseptic indie act, they're on Capitol, who have been around in the past couple of years making the sort of white bread, guitar touch trap you might have heard from Y2K and BB No Money, but merged with a healthy dose of Sublime with the nasal and lethargic vocals and a blasé upbeat attitude that's a lot more AJR than Andy Grammer. And yet somehow it gets worse. Not only does the vocal fidelity seem to be really inconsistent off the thin percussion, the lyrics are a mess of cheap motivational cliches are just outright nonsense. You can't just give your feet gravity. All objects have gravitational pull relative to their mass. And then there's the line, just say whatever, cause there's no way around it. Implying that you actually can't fix your problems, so just live with it. Sure, there are ups and downs, but you know, this is the same non-effort that AJR pushed. But somehow even worse, cause our frontman's got the winking half-ironic delivery that shows at best disinterest in all of this. Go with the brand safe plastic nature of the production and the aesthetic. This is gross on a fundamental level. And easily one of the worst songs to hit the charts since La La La. Next. Number 94, Solia by Bad Bunny. <laughs> So I listened to a lot of Bad Bunny that charted this week, and am I the only one who's not really won over yet by all the hype? Sure, as a performer, he's grown on me a little, and this is probably my favorite charting song from the album, but it's hard to say it's more than just pretty good, mostly thanks to the slightly thicker atmosphere that builds into a more textured and otherwise interesting tropical percussion line than all the Latin trap and reggaeton. And I do like the lyrical sentiment, this girl's going out to the club to dance and build an excuse to dump her boyfriend, and Bad Bunny is more just the secondary character on the sidelines getting used, and it's implied it doesn't even really stick the landing to hook up with her. And that's actually pretty real, and I appreciate Bad Bunny being mature enough to see it. I, I don't love the synth sliding over the post-chorus, so... Yeah, you know what? It's an album cut. It won't last the album bomb, but this was a good song. If you're curious, check it out. Number 78, Same Thing by Lil Baby. Now on the flip side, Lil Baby didn't come close to winning me over because he's a blank vacuum with no charisma, and this album bomb sure as hell did not change that impression, so I'm gonna try and keep this brief. This album cut takes a take Heath beat over a jittery acoustic loop, and then drops Lil Baby's mumbling drone over it. When you've got no energy and then say you are a top 5 MC, 
I don't believe you, especially when your vague aspirational storytelling is utterly forgettable. But my larger issue comes in the second verse where he's trying to comfort this girl so he's going to take her on jets around the world and then wants to have her running laps and applauding him for his non-existent greatness. I mean, it's one of the clunkiest flows that he had on this album. In other words, it's mediocre except for when it sucks. Next, number 61, The Other Side by SZA and Justin Timberlake. So is Justin Timberlake just the mascot for the Trolls franchise now? And why is he recruiting otherwise good artists to work with him on these soundtrack cuts that have more staying power than the actual movie? Now here he got SZA who was in full dead-eyed what lovers do mold for a squonking disco tune with entirely too much auto-tune and goopy synth work. And like a lot of unimpressive disco, the drum machines are painfully stiff and the bass is the rounded non-presence to provide foundation but no real punch. And are the lyrics even worth discussing when they're just basic platitudes and how the grass isn't greener on the other side, where the escapist flair is just so utterly empty of personality? Alright, look, the worst thing about soundtrack fodder is when it obviously sounds like soundtrack fodder. So this time, let's not reward it with success. Next, number 38, PTSD by G Herbo, featuring Chance the Rapper, Juice World, and Lil Uzi Vert. See my past everywhere. So this is G Herbo's first charting single. Yeah, I'm just about as surprised, given how much buzz he's had within the Chicago drill scene for years now. But thanks to guest features from Chance and Lil Uzi Vert and the hook from the late Juice World, he's here opposite a watery fragment of murky guitar and a really cheap, fizzy sounding trap stutter. And yet he's not shying away from some of the bleak subject matter and the gunplay that actually seems pretty consistent with Juice World's dreary hook. But the big surprise for me came from Chance and Uzi. In the former case, damn, after the big day, it just feels really shocking to hear Chance talk about being so desensitized to murder and gunplay that after seeing a shooting, he went with his mom to get a copy of Grand Theft Auto San Andreas growing up and then have one of the scenes where one of his friends will rob another while they're bleeding out. So, yeah, you know what, Lil Uzi Vert is not in a position where he can follow that, but he actually stayed on topic, and that kept the atmosphere workable. And this wound up as a potent and pretty damn solid song. I mean, not sure how much traction it's gonna hold, but yeah, good stuff. I'm impressed. Next up, number 33, La Difficile by Bad Bunny. Okay, only two more Bad Bunny songs here. The rest are just more Lil Baby, fair warning. And this one, I mean, between the glassy, plucky percussion tacked onto the standard reggaeton knock and the by the numbers give and take of this girl who will do all the drugs and kiss all the boys and girls. I mean, not only have I heard this routine done before, I've heard it done with more unique flair and complexity with better production on the charts this week. So yeah, it doesn't do a lot for me, but on a slightly better note, number 32, Sivio a tu mama by Bad Bunny. Porque ya tú no me quieres. Okay, points for that cute burbling melody that slides around the trap clicking. It does highlight the earnest romantic side that Bad Bunny probably doesn't sell enough, even if it does feel kind of thin. It is likable. Now, the lyrics, they kind of are too, where he's post-breakup and he's trying to deal with that respectfully, even as he's kind of spiraling, not feeling in the best of shape and still very much not over her, even though, as he admits on the hook, he does better without her. I mean, it's a nice bit of self-awareness, it's a good sentiment, and it's a pretty cute way to open up the album. Pleasant song. Good moment. I like it. Take a look. Check this out. Next up, number 31, Emotionally Scarred by Lil Baby. Okay, I've heard some people praise Lil Baby's moments of introspection and say that his downbeat delivery implies more sadness than you often see in the text. And yet, if all you're relying on is subtext for that drama, when the rest of your song is braggadocious arrogance that doesn't really match the clinking keys, darker flute, and the bass opposite the standard weak trap skitter, and as a performer, you've got no real variation in your delivery and even less in your content. That's more brand names than wordplay that actively contradict each other. You called yourself a top five MC. How is that not placing you in the GOAT conversation? Look, I just have a hard time really buying that train of logic. Because this is mediocre. And like James Harden, 
can't close. Next. Next up, number 28. Live Off My Closet by Lil Baby featuring Future. You know, at least Future has an underlying sense of nihilism and ever so slightly a little more flair in his brand name Wallow, at least in terms of technical skill. And thus putting him on a song with Lil Baby, who's just a far lesser version, honestly feels pointless. So over these rinky-dink keys to get Lil Baby at least trying a little harder until his verse is just stuff full of flub rhymes. And then we got Future, who I'm fairly certain stopped even trying to rhyme altogether midway through. It's not even interestingly toxic or dark, it's just boring. A borderline commercial. And yet, while we're on that subject, number 23, Commercial by Lil Baby featuring Lil Uzi Vert. All right, look, I'll have more to say about Lil Uzi Vert when I talk about Eternal Attack on the on the Pulse and next week on Billboard Breakdown. But in a way, it kind of makes sense that he's here. It's empty flows that might sound impressive if you like the vocal timbre, but if you don't or you're trying to pay attention to anything that's actually being said, you got a bunch of empty flexing, Lil Baby falling in love with Good Head from a woman that he doesn't even know her name, and the sort of drug dealing and gunplay that at this point feels more rote and cliche than actually potent, especially when the trap beat is this faded. And considering so much of Lil Uzi Bird's broad appeal is anchored to his production, this just seems like a complete misstep on an otherwise generic song. But case in point, number 21, That Way by Lil Uzi Bird. Now, I know what a bunch of you are thinking, that I gotta be angry that Lil Uzi Vert interpolated I Want It That Way by the Backstreet Boys, and I just don't care. I mean, congratulations, you narrowed in on one part of a melodically robust song, and arguably the most obvious to drive into the ground, and then you had to sample the Kids Bop version of the song, because I doubt there was anything close to the budget to clear the rate for a pop classic. But beyond that, it's a little Uzi Vert where he's flexing and killing his girlfriend after getting a ton of head. That's all there really is to this. I can't even say the production picks up the organic warmth and the layered flair of the original sample opposite the cheap drums and the washed out instrumental. And really, in comparison to the rest of Eternal Take, it's just very middle of the road. Just kind of mediocre. Next, number 18, Heatin' Up by Lil Baby and Gunna. Okay, are we still doing this? I think it's been proven for the past year and change that Drip Too Hard, that was a fluke at best, and way more dependent on the production than anything these two had to say or any sort of transcendent chemistry, especially when you undercut the bombast of all the strings with all the most limp snare and hi-hat combinations I've heard in a while. And Lil Baby, why are you bragging about not knowing how to turn on your own new car? Why is Gunna comparing himself to Barry Bonds, especially considering how said hitting records were tainted by PEDs? Are you saying all your fame is illegitimate here? And those are pretty much the only interesting lines in the entire song, which is flexing, non-committal gunplay. In other words, pretty much like every other Lil Baby song that we covered this week. Utterly tedious. Let's move on. And finally, number five, Stupid Love by Lady Gaga. So I said I was a little bit skeptical that this would be a hit for Lady Gaga, and that might seem kind of odd given that it's an obvious throwback to her glory days in electropop, with a coursing synth groove and the sleeker delivery. Maybe something closer to a cut from Born This Way with a synth palette, with one of the better grooves crib from Art Pop, but with enough of the modern structure courtesy the pitch shift and drop from Blood Pop. And you know what? That is a pretty potent groove, so why does the entire song have this weird hollowness to it? Well, part of it is the lyrics. I feel more tasteful and stripped back compared to the gloriously weird or even bad moments that came on the fame and the fame monster. Lady Gaga's not trying to be as provocative as she used to. But wasn't that the appeal of songs like Bad Romance and Love Game and Paparazzi and Teeth? Or even some of the wilder singles from Born This Way like Judas? Even when they weren't great, there was a lyrical verve and intensity that this just does not have. It reminds me of other similarly empty songs like The Cure. But hell, Ava Max's Sweet But Psycho might be derivative as all hell, but at least it was trying harder, it was better than this. So, okay yeah, good groove. 
decent sound. Maybe it's enough to keep people interested, but Lady Gaga has no reason at this point of her career to play it safe. And I'm looking forward to hearing more of the stuff that isn't safe. That's all I'm saying. But honestly, I just wish that last song was better, because otherwise, this week was rough. Best is going to PTSD by G Herbo, Chance the Rapper, The Late Juice World, and Lil Uzi Vert, with honorable mention to Solia by Bad Bunny. Now, the worst, yeah, Lil Baby's getting the dishonorable mention for the same thing, but worst of the week is Sunday Best by Surfaces. Let's get rid of this band before they start blowing up, okay? The last thing we need is more of that. Anyway, next week. Lil Uzi Verb, Eternal Take, maybe with a bit from Megan Thee Stallion and Janae Aiko as competition. We'll have to see. But until then, I'm Mark. You're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse.